Simon the fisherman stopped repairing his second best net and smiled broadly when he saw his brother Andrew running towards him. Andrew running? That was a rare sight. Usually he liked to take his time about everything, but Simon's smile immediately vanished. Andrew looked excited. Was it bad news? An accident maybe? Or somebody taken sick? Andrew arrived out of breath. What is it, brother? Simon asked impatiently. We have seen him, Andrew gasped. Who is we? Simon asked. And whom have you seen? Him. Andrew managed to get his voice under control. The Messiah. What next? Simon sneered. Here, come and help me repair this net. You got four big holes and I tell you, we have met the Messiah. John and I, our partner, John, the son of Zebedee. Was he with you? Yes, he's no fool, Simon admitted. But whatever makes you think, the Baptist pointed him out to us, to everybody. Simon put down his net. He rose. The Baptist is a holy man, he said. Tell me more. The Baptist said he was only the forerunner of the one to come. He was only preparing the way for him, and that he himself was not worthy to tie up his shoelaces. He called him the Lamb of God and pointed him out to us. And who was he? A rabbi from Nazareth. His name is Jesus. And he is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, the one who's coming that people have been waiting for. For centuries? There's no doubt, Simon. Not when you have met him. And John and I have met him. Never have I heard a man talk like that in all my life. The Messiah must be more than a talker, Simon said. He will be the King of Israel. He is the elect of God. Come and see for yourself, Andrew told him. Simon hesitated another moment. I will, he said. A quarter of an hour later, Simon stood before a tall man in a simple white robe. The man was young, no more than 30 years of age. His eyes, Simon had never seen eyes like them. They seemed to look through a man, not just at him, yet they were gentle. You are Simon, the son of Jonah, Jesus said. Your name will be Cephas. Weeks passed, but the picture of the tall man in the white robe would not leave Simon's mind. He had not been able to talk to him much, no more than a few minutes, for Jesus was then leaving to preach at some other place, perhaps his hometown, Nazareth. And why did he call me Cephas? Simon kept wondering. It was an Aramaic word and meant rock. The Greeks, as well as many educated Jews who seemed to prefer Greek to their own language, would have said Petros, just as the Aramaic word Messias was Christos in Greek. The Messias. Could it be that Andrew was right and this Jesus really was the Messias for whom the Jewish people had been waiting for so long? Andrew believed it. So did John, the son of Zebedee, and his brother James. But why? Jesus himself has said nothing of the kind. The Baptist, of course, had alluded to it very strongly. Well, if this Jesus was the Messiah, he would change everything. The whole country, the whole world. Things would happen. Unheard of things. But why did he call him Cephas? It was a compliment, one might say. A rock was a firm thing. Something solid and reliable. Not easily shifted. Not likely to crumble. Well, it was no good speculating too much about it. There was work to be done. A fisherman could not afford to be idle. His partners, the two sons of old Zebedee, had gone out on the lake in their boat. So would he, now that night had come. The night was the best time for fishing on Lake Genesareth. Simon called for his men to get the boat ready. Oh.